Hello everyone, this is Mike History 2, and this will be the final part of the history of Zimbabwe. So, the country gained official independence as Zimbabwe on April 18, 1980. The government held independence celebrations in Rufaro Stadium in Salisbury, the capital. Lord Christopher Soames, the last governor of Southern Rhodesia, watched as Charles Prince of Wales gave a farewell salute, and the Rhodesian Signal Corps played God Save the Queen. Mugabe's government changed the capital's name from Salisbury to Harare on April 18, 1982, in celebration of the second anniversary of independence. The new constitution provided for an executive president as head of state, with the prime minister as head of government. Reverend Kanan Banana, and no, I'm not making this up, was the first president. The government then changed the constitution in 1987 to provide for an executive president and abolish the office of prime minister, basically making Mugabe the dictator, and this became official on January 1st, 1988. The parliament of Zimbabwe had a directly elected House of Assembly and an indirectly elected Senate. Um, and the constitution established two separate voter rolls, one for the African majority, who had 80% of the seats in parliament, and the other for Europeans and other ethnic minorities, who held 20%. However, the government again changed the constitution in 1986, eliminating the voter rolls and replacing the European seats with seats filled by nominated members. Um, so Prime Minister Mugabe kept Peter Wells the head of the army in his, in his government and put him in charge of integrating the Zimbabwe People's Revolutionary Army, or ZIPRA, and the Zimbabwe African National Liberation Army, ZANLA, as well as the Rhodesian Army. Um, now, while Western media outlets praised his efforts at reconciliation with the European minority, tension soon developed. Ethnic divisions soon came back to the forefront of national politics, and tension between Zapu and Zanu erupted, with guerrilla activities starting again in Matabeleland and southwest Zimbabwe. In 1982, government security officials found large amounts of arms and ammunition on properties owned by Zapu, accusing Nkomo and his followers of plotting to overthrow the government. Mugabe fired Nkomo and his friends from the cabinet. As a result of what they saw as persecution of Nkomo and his party, Zapu supporters arm and army deserters began a campaign of rebellion against the government, mainly in Matabele land, the home of the Ndabeles, who were uh, Zapu's main followers. And this continued until 1987. This included attacks on government personnel and installation, banditry, and disrupting security and economic life in the rural areas. Because of the unsettled security situation immediately after independence and democratic sentiments, the government kept in force a state of emergency. This gave the government widespread powers under the Law and Order Maintenance Act, including the rights to arrest people without charge, which he used a lot. 1983-84, to 84, the government declared a curfew in areas of Matabele land and sent in the army in an attempt to suppress members of the Indabele people. The pacification campaign known as the Bukuruhundi, a strong wind resulted in at least 20,000 civilian deaths perpetrated by an elite North Korean trained brigade. So ZANU increased its majority in the 1985 election, winning 67 of the 100 seats. The majority gave Mugabe the opportunity to start making changes to the constitution, including those with regard to land restoration. Fighting did not cease until Mugabe and Nkomo reached an agreement in December 1987, whereby Zapu became a part of ZANU and the government changed the constitution make Mugabe the country's first president and Nkomo one of two vice presidents. Elections in March 1990 resulted in another overwhelming victory for Mugabe and his party, which won 117 out of the 120 election seats. However, election observers estimated that only 54% of voters had even come and found the campaign to be neither free nor fair. The general health of the civilian population also began to significantly flounder, by 1997, 25% of the population of Zimbabwe had been infected by the AIDS virus. During the 1990s, students, trade unionists, and workers often protested to express their discontent with the government, and student protests in 1990 against proposals for an increase in government control of universities, and again in 1991 and 1992, caused clashes with the police. Trade unionists and workers also criticized the government during this time. In 1992, police prevented trade unionists from holding anti-government protests. In 1994, widespread industrial unrest weakened the economy, and on December 9, 1997, a national strike paralyzed the country. Mugabe was panicked by the demonstration by Zanla ex-soldiers, war veterans, 
who had been the heart of the, his army 20 years earlier in the Bush War. He agreed to pay them a lot of money, which only further weakened the economy. The discontent with the government spawned uh, excessive government crackdowns, which in turn started to destroy both the state and the society. This in turn brought even more discontent. Although many Europeans had left Zimbabwe after independence, mainly for South Africa, those who remained continued to hold disproportionate control of some sectors of the economy, especially agriculture. In the late 1990s, Europeans accounted for less than 1% of the population, but owned 70% of farmland. Mugabe raised this issue of land ownership by European farmers, and in a calcul calculated move, he began forcible land redistribution. Amid a severe drought in the region, the police and the military were instructed not to stop the invasion of European-owned farms, and this has led to a mass migration of European Zimbabweans out of Zimbabwe, and only further worsened the economy. It was also run, the economy that is, was run along corporatist lines with strict government controls on all aspects of the economy. A 40% devaluation of the Zimbabwean dollar was allowed to occur, however this also failed, and poverty just kept increasing. However, Zimbabwe began experiencing a period of considerable political and economic unrest in 1999. Opposition to Mugabe and ZANU, ZANU government grew considerably after the mid-1990s because of the worst economy and the human rights conditions brought about by the seizure of farmland owned by European farmers and economic sanctions imposed by Western countries. The Movement for Democratic Change was established in September 1999 as an opposition for party founded by trade unionist Morgan Savangirai. The MDC's first opposition to test, oppos to test opposition to the Mugabe government came in February 2000 when a referendum was held on a draft constitution proposed by the government. This new constitution, constitution would have allowed Mugabe to seek two more additional terms granted government officials immunity from prosecution and authorized government seizure of more European-owned land. The referendum was defeated. Shortly thereafter, the government, through a loosely organized group of war veterans, sanctioned an aggressive land redistribution program, often characterized, characterized by forced expulsion of European farmers and violence against both farmers and their employees. Now, parliamentary elections held in June 2000 were marred by localized violence and claims of electoral irregularities and cheating, as well as the government intimidating the opposition. Presidential elections were held in March 2002, and in the months leading up to the elections, ZANU, with the support of the army and security services, set about wholesale intimidation and suppression of the MDC-led opposition. Despite strong international criticism, these measures, along with organized subversion and hacking of the voting, ensured another victory for Mugabe. The government's behavior drew strong criticism, which limited sanctions from the EU and the US against members of the Mugabe regime. And since the 2002 elections, Zimbabwe suffered further economic difficulty and growing political chaos. Now, divisions within the MDC had also began to appear during early in the decade after Morgan Savangirai was arrested and put on trial for treason charges. This crippled his control of party affairs and raised questions about his competence. It also catalyzed a major split within the party. In 2004, he was acquitted, but not until after suffering serious abuse and mistreatment in prison. The opposing faction was led by Welshman Nkube, who was the general secretary of the party. In mid-2004, vigilantes loyal to Mr. Savangirai began attacking members who were mostly loyal to Nkube, climaxing in a September raid on the party's headquarters in which the security director was nearly thrown to his death. Now, divisive as the violence was, it was a debate over the rule of law that set off the party's final breakup in November 2005, and these divisions severely weakened the opposition. Mugabe's political allies were able to weaken the opposition internally, and it was also destabilized externally by using violence in anti-Mugabe strongholds to prevent citizens from voting. Some voters were turned away from polling stations, even though they had proper identification, further guaranteeing that the government could control the results. Also, Mugabe started to appoint judges sympathetic to the government, making any judicial appeal futile. Mugabe was also able to appoint 30 members of parliament. 
As Senate elections further uh, approached, opposition splits occurred. Nkubis supporters argued that the MDC should field a slate of candidates, but Savangirai wanted a boycott. When they voted on the issue, Nkubis' side narrowly won, but Mr. Savangirai declared that as president of the party, he didn't have to follow the majority's decision. As a result, the elections for a new Senate in November 2005 were mostly boycotted by the opposition, and Mugabe's party won 24 of the 31 constituencies where elections were held, and once again, very few voters actually showed up because most of them were either rejected or intimidated. In May 2005, the government began Operation Murambatsvina, and its purpose was to punish political opponents. The UN estimates that 700,000 people had been left without jobs or homes as a result. Families and traders, especially at the beginning of the operation, were often given no warning before police destroyed their homes and businesses. Others were able to save some possessions and building materials, but often had nowhere to go, even though the government stated that people should be returning to their rural homes. Thousands of families were left unprotected in the open in the middle of Zimbabwe's winter. And the government interfered with NGO efforts to provide emergency assistance in the displaced areas. Some families were also removed to camps where they had no shelter or cooking facilities and almost no food, supplies, or medical assistance. Also, Human Rights Watch said that the evictions had disrupted treatment for people with AIDS in a country where 3,000 die from the disease each week and about 1.3 million children have been orphaned. In September 2005, Mugabe signed constitutional amendments that reinstituted a national senate and nationalized all land. This converted all ownership rights into leases, and the amendments also ended the right of landowners to challenge government, basically theft of land in the courts, and marked the end of any hope of returning any land that had been grabbed by armed land invasions. Elections for the Senate in November resulted in a victory once again for Mugabe, and the early months of 2006 were once again uh, marked by food shortages and mass hunger. In August 2006, runaway inflation forced the government to replace its existing currency with a revalued one. And in December, ZANU, December 2006, ZANU proposed the harmonization of the parliamentary and presidential election schedules in 2010. However, this was seen as the op by the opposition as an excuse to extend Mugabe's term as president until 2010, and remember, at this point, he'd been in power for 30 years. Now, the economy had shrunk by 50% from 2000 to 2007. In September 2007, the inflation rate was almost 8,000%, which was the world's highest. There were frequent power and water outages, and Harare's drinking water became unreliable in 2006. And as a consequence, dysentery and cholera swept the city in December 2006 and January 2007. Unemployment is running at a record 80% now, and there was wide widespread hunger manipulated by the government so that wherever most of the people supported the opposition, they would suffer the most. There was almost no bread, and there was poor wheat harvests, and the closure of all bakeries just made this even worse. Now the country which used to be one of Africa's richest, became one of its poorest. It was now viewed by many as a failed state, and the government lacked the resources to deal with the ravages of the AIDS pandemic, which affects 25% of the population. Now, it also managed to cling to power by creating wealthy neighborhoods for government ministers and senior parties. Zimbabwe's bakeries shut down in October 2007, and supermarkets warned that they would have no bread for the foreseeable future due to the collapse in wheat production after the seizure of all European-owned farms. There was also power shortages and electricity cuts, which affected irrigation and also just made the situation worse. In fact, a lot of the time Zimbabwe relies on Mozambique for electricity, but sometimes it doesn't supply it due to an unpaid bill of $35 million. Now, the educational system was also once one of the best in Africa, but went into crisis in 2007 because of the country's economic collapse. Also, corruption has crept into the system, and many students who never actually study are deemed excellent in subjects which they never attended. Zimbabwe held another election in 2008 on March 29th, and the three major candidates were President Robert Mugabe, of course, Morgan Savangirai, and Simba Makoni, who was an independent. However, since none of them reached a majority in the first round, a second round was held. 
with Savangi Rai winning 47.9% and Mugabe 43.2%. Savangi Rai withdrew from the second round a week before it is scheduled to take place because of violence against his party supporters. Now, the second round went ahead anyways, and despite criticism, led to Mugabe winning once again. Now, because of Zimbabwe's dire economic situation, the election was expected to provide him with his toughest electoral challenge to date. However, once again, Mugabe's supporters just rigged the election, and no officials re official results were announced for more than a month after the first round. Now, in January 2009, Morgan Savangirai announced that he would do as the leaders across Africa had insisted and join a coalition government as prime minister with Robert Mugabe. On February 11, 2009, he was sworn in as the prime minister of Zimbabwe, and by 2009, inflation had peaked at 500 billion percent per year under the Mugabe government, and the Zimbabwean currency was completely worthless. The opposition shared power with the Mugabe regime between 2009 and 2013, and Zimbabwe switched to using the U.S. dollar as currency, and the economy uh, improved, reaching a growth rate, growth, growth rate sorry, of 10% per year. In 2013, Mugabe won another election, and he continued being corrupt uh, as the economy collapsed and protests took place all across the country. Now, finally, on Wednesday, November 15th, 2017, everyone had had enough, and the military placed him under house arrest and removed him from power. They placed tanks around government buildings in Harare and blocked the main road to the airport. Emerson Nangagwa helped to orchestrate the coup, and he had recently been fired by Mr. Mugabe so that his wife could replace him instead. So he, Robert Mugabe, resigned on November 21st, 2017, and second vice president, Fele Kizela Mpoko, became the acting president. However, he was soon replaced by Emerson Nangagwa, who became official president three days later. Elections were held on July 30th, 2018 to elect the president and members of both houses of the parliament. Now, once again, ZANU won the majority of seats in parliament, and Emerson Nangagwa was declared the winner after receiving 50% of the votes. But once again, the opposition accused him of rigging the vote which is likely. And in subsequent riots by MDC supporters, the army opened fire and killed three people, while three others died of their injuries the next day. Finally, in January 2019, following a 130% increase in the price of fuel, thousands of Zimbabweans protested and the government responded with a crackdown that resulted in hundreds of arrests and multiple deaths. So yeah, basically, Zimbabwe right now sucks. Anyways, I hope you, I guess, enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share. See you next time.